Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Before we get started, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country's facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden, the last thing any of us need is more to worry about. Unfortunately, we now have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our own hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging every one of you tuning into the show right now to get the Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you'll learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. Tonight, we're joined by the co-creator of The War on Children, Landon Starbuck, as well as editor-in-chief of The Post-Millennial, Libby Emmons. Welcome back, ladies. Uh, obviously, we've seen all the craziness at all these universities across the country, anti-Semitism, rioting, because I don't think we can call this just, you know, your run-of-the-mill First Amendment usage protest. Uh, these have gotten very aggressive. They've taken over buildings. They've destroyed and vandalized property. They've threatened people's lives. Uh, some of these quote unquote protesters. And it turns out that not that this is surprising. We find out, of course, a lot of these people, I would say a bulk of them aren't even students. These are, these are individuals who are professional agitators. They are paid. And so people say, well, who would pay them? How, why would somebody pay to have this happen? Who is funding this? And it turns out that some of Joe Biden's biggest donors, Libby, are paying for uh, at least supporting and funding groups that are putting these people up to causing this chaos. Um, they're big supporters of Joe Biden, like George Soros, like David Rockefeller Jr. Jr. This is all via the Tides Foundation, by the way. Susan and Nick Pritzker, which if you've heard that name, look at the state of Illinois. Um, these are all big Democrats and big Biden donors, Libby. What do you make of the fact that these are the people whose money is going to cause this anti-Semitism, all this chaos and unrest around our college campuses? Yeah, this has been really interesting to see this unfold, although it's not particularly surprising because this is their program. This is the program of the Biden Democrats and of the far left. And we've seen a lot of donors fleeing from college campuses, like we saw Bill Ackman dropping his support for universities. He was a longtime donor and a very wealthy man. But this is exactly what George Soros wants. This is He does this kind of thing for the same reason that he funds far left DAs to run places like San Francisco and LA and other places. This is what they're about. They want to see this kind of chaos and they want to fuel this kind of, you know, rioting and unrest among young people because then they can capture them, they can capture their minds and they can get them to vote for their causes. They do this with climate change. They do this across the board. It's not just this thing. And it's not about this thing. This is all about the revolution. This is all about causing strife and uh, disorientation among young people. And that's what it's about. One of these people, uh, Landon, who was uh, arrested, one of these violent protesters, um, this guy's not even, not only is he not a student, he's 40 years old, and he was um, known to be an agitator in the past. He is the son of multimillionaire ad executive parents. He's married to a model and lives in a $3.4 million Brooklyn brownstone. These are the kind of people who are out there causing all of this unrest. These are the kind of people who are threatening Jewish students, who are calling for death to America, death to Israel. They are pro a terrorist organization, Hamas. This is the face of those type of people. What do you think of that guy when you heard about him, Landon? I mean, I don't know whether to to believe these people are so privileged that they just need a cause and so they latch themselves on to these extremist uh, agendas or if they are, 
you know, know that mommy or daddy will be able to bail them out when they get arrested. I think they need some people who are educated to kind of, you know, lead, ring lead these operations um, so that, you know, the rest of the people will blindly follow their directives. I mean, some of these people are truly ideological and, and like in Soros's words, you know, he, you need chaos as a form of redirection. And I think that these ideologues are, are so impassioned. I mean, it's like a religion to them that they follow that and they take it as gospel and, and they'll execute any orders. Yeah, it's it's amazing to see. And isn't it interesting, by the way, did, did anyone happen to notice that whether you're looking all the way out in California at the, the protests out there, the people sleeping on, on the grass, or you're looking all the way east at Columbia University, it's all the same sort of tense. It seems to be all the same sort of gear. I think a lot of us from the beginning were like, well, well, why does it all look the same? Somebody must be funding this. No different, by the way, than during the, the summer of love, 2020, the George Floyd protests. That was all uh, fueled by money given by George Soros. You would have these like pallets of bricks that I read about being delivered to street corners for people to utilize to cause vandalism, damage, you know, destroy property, all those sorts of things. Very similar here. They all sort of have the same look, Libby, all of these things. Um, and at Columbia, the law students are now claiming that they are irrevocably shaken, that they are too shaken, in fact, to take exams this semester and that they should all just be given a passing grade for this semester because they couldn't possibly be asked to do any sort of work at this point. Um, I don't know. I think about if maybe in years to come you hire a lawyer and you think, wow, this is a person who went to a great school, went to Columbia Law School, and they've graduated somewhere in the neighborhood of 2024, 2025. I don't know. I, I might take a second look and, and, and see about possibly somebody else. Are you surprised that they're saying that they can't take exams now? I know they got rid of their commencement at this point. Yeah, I think this is absolutely ridiculous. This is ludicrous. This is not the kind of behavior that you want from any kind of attorney. Attorneys have to work late. They have to think hard. They have to come up with ways to get their defendants off, likely some of these activists. And at this point, I don't know why anyone would ever hire an attorney who went to Columbia from this time period. It reminds me of this incredibly cringe video I saw today of um, Harvard medical students doing little dances about how, you know, they're going to be these great doctors and they don't seem to know anything. These are the same people who, you know, cry in lectures when they're shown slides of, you know, operations. So yeah, I think these Columbia students are completely wussified. The fact that they think that they should get any job ever is absolutely beyond me. I don't think that they're qualified to wipe toilets at McDonald's. And I don't know what it is that they think is waiting for them out in the world if they can't suck it up and take some exams when some people are rioting outside and, you know, occupying buildings. I've, I've been to Columbia University. I attended Columbia University for graduate school. There's always a comp, some kind of disaster going on. There's always people having some kind of issue. And you know what you do? You do your work. You ignore everybody else. You try and get your things done. You go to the library and study. You ignore anyone who prevents you from getting your work done. And you do what you have been sent there to do or what you signed up to do, which is earn your degree and work hard and know what it is you're talking about so that when you graduate, you have some kind of reputation, you have some kind of ability. These people should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Yeah, Olivia, it's shocking you made it out. I mean, congratulations. I, it was congratulations. really a long time ago at this point. So. <laughs> It's just, Lyndon, I, I hear stuff like this. And I'm like, how soft are we getting as a society if this is happening? I always hearken back to World War II because I really do feel like, you know, they talk about it as the greatest generation. And there's something to that. These people went through hell. And whether it's, you know, the, the young men who literally lied about their ages when they were too young to join the military so that they could go overseas and fight or whether it was here at home, women who were thrown into the workforce in ways they never had been before. You know, you look all across the world. I mean, heck, obviously Europe at that time, if you were a Jewish person in Europe at that time, it goes without saying. But I think about what these people went through. And then I look at this kind of stuff and I'm like, oh my God, what is the trajectory for our country, for the future generations, if this is where we are right now, if they're like, oh my, I can't, 
no, I, I can't see, I can't do anything. I'm, I'm not able to take this test. You've been in school for the entire semester. I assume you learned something in your classes. Figure out a way to take the test. It's ridiculous, Landon. I mean, weak men create hard times. It's that old saying. And I yeah. think where we really went wrong is the coloring safe spaces on college campuses. Oh That's God. when I knew things were going to really go downhill. I mean, the, the fragility of these people. How, how could you be a heart surgeon and not show up to work because your feelings are hurt and then somebody flatlines because you didn't show up to work or or be a lawyer and not show up and your, you know, your case is just thrown out because because of someone's like microaggression or something ridiculous yes, like I mean that. what kind of, what are they preparing them for I mean they're yeah. certainly not preparing them for life so you know I don't know what the future of college is I think we're gonna have to send our kids somewhere in the south because this is just nuts on college campuses and these yeah. Ivy League schools I mean it's not what it once was yeah I mean they've really shown their hand someone who's not not up for any of this nonsense is Bill Maher you know, every now and again, um, Libby, he comes out and says something that I'm like, absolutely right, Bill Maher. And he was talking specifically about Biden's student loan uh, scheme, which, of course, Biden's back on that. It'll only cost the taxpayers somewhere in the neighborhood of one trillion dollars for Joe Biden to try and buy votes, which, by the way, Libby, isn't even working. Because if you look at the youth vote right now, these people are voting Trump. If Donald Trump and Joe Biden had an election today with 18 to 24 year olds, Donald Trump would win handily. But he's upset, of course, because he's like, wait a minute, all of this tax money is going to support Jew hating students. And, uh, you know, this is what we're funding right now. If you look around at our major universities and college campuses all across the country, he's not wrong. Yeah, he's not wrong. We used to do these crazy things like fund poetry degrees and classes in basket weaving and things like this. But now that is all out the window. These kids aren't even going to class. You see their professors going out there saying, this is where the real class is. This is where the oh. real education is. It's time to put away your books. It's time to get out of the libraries. It's time to protest on campus. And if you notice, so many of these protests aren't even about the thing they claim to be protesting about. These protests are about the protest. A lot of their right. demands are amnesty for the students who are protesting. That's what these things are about. Amnesty, we don't wanna get kicked out of our dorm rooms. Bill Maher is exactly right about this. There is absolutely no cause for the American taxpayers to be paying for the degrees of students who are running around uh, protesting their universities and protesting the United States government and not going to class and claiming they can't take their finals and uh, you know they won't even be useful professionals when they graduate. There should be some use to your degree. There should be some use to you as a human being, as an individual. And none of those things are being proven right now by by this year's crop of uh, students. Yeah, you know, you know what would help, Landon? You know what would help these, these um, young professionals whenever they come out of college? It's not just about paying off their student loan debt. How about give them a great economy? How about give them a great workforce to go into? How about give them ways they can actually go out earn that money and then repay their student debt. Guess what? I took out a student loan and I paid it all back. So it can be done. This is this is something that people have done for for a long time in America. Now, of course, you you see that these colleges are ratcheting up the um the tuition every year. It gets more and more expensive. And then of course, on the other side, then you've got this great Ivy League education. You know, you went to Columbia Law School and you couldn't take your finals because you were too upset. I mean, of course, that's that's how how dumb it all is right now. But then you you're strapped with uh, you know, a huge debt on the other side. I get it. I get why Joe Biden wants to pay these kids off and say, you should vote for me over this. But there's a better way than just forking over the money and giving money, by the way, from people, a lot of whom didn't go to college. A lot of these people said, you know what, instead, I'm going to go to a trade school or I'm going to go straight into the workforce and do a different job. And now their money is going to go to pay off this person's law degree or whatever it might be. I don't think so. And, and the fact that you had the Supreme Court already rule on this, and we've already come back to this, and Joe Biden is so desperate to get votes from people that we're talking about this again, uh, uh, man, this is getting crazy. They're getting, it seems, very desperate on the Democrat side of the aisle. 
Absolutely. And I, I keep thinking about all of the social media videos of these like crying college, you know, highly educated master degrees that they can't even find a job. And they're like, well, I was promised all this stuff and I can't yeah. find a job. I mean, you know, if your economy is is awful, it doesn't matter what kind of degree you have if there's no jobs for you. And so I think that this is like a last ditch effort is just throwing freebies. I mean, this is what the Democrats do to try to lure in new voters out of desperation because their policies fail every Every time. Yep. And we uh, look around, ladies and gentlemen, are you better off now than you were three and a half years ago when Joe Biden became president? Every person across this country will answer that question. No, because he has made life harder and worse for people. The Democrat policies have made life worse for everyone. It, there's no doubt about it. Um, obviously, we had all this crazy stuff going on on these campuses. And you saw there were so many instances where they would tear down the American flag. This happened uh, in North Carolina at the campus of UNC, and they raised the Palestinian flag instead, some of these pro-Hamas folks. And the I believe it was the chancellor of the university then the next day went out, or as soon as possible went out, took down the Palestinian flag, put back up Libby, the American flag, and, and good for them as, as they should have done. And they tr when they tried to take it down again, there were these frat boys who showed up and said, not only are we not going to let you take down the American flag, but what I loved about it is there was a part of it that really spoke to how I was raised. And I didn't even think kids would, would understand this or do this anymore. I remember, by the way, when I was in fifth grade at Wrightsville Beach Elementary School, the fifth graders got to uh, put the flag up in the morning and take it down in the afternoon. That was such an honor. It was reserved only for the fifth graders. And there was a rotation of people. And when your time came up, I'll tell you what, I practiced with a flag I had at home with my parents so many times because I never wanted to mess that up. And I never wanted the flag to touch the ground because it is it is uh, offensive and disrespectful to allow the American flag to touch the ground. You never do that. And what were these frat boys doing out there? They get a bad rap for a lot of things. They were there protecting the American flag and they were there holding it up, Libby, so that it wouldn't touch the ground. Wow. Round of applause for the, the frat boys at UNC. And I went to NC State and we're supposed to be rivals. But on this instance, I'm going to give them this one. This was amazing to see. I totally agree with you. I thought this was really heartwarming. I really liked seeing these guys get out there. And that's such a beautiful memory you have of elementary school, Laura. I love that. I don't know that that's something that our elementary schoolers are doing now. I don't know if they're really even taught that much to respect the flag. I don't even know if they're still doing the Pledge of Allegiance. I remember that from when I was Yes, a kid. good well, question. Yeah, and I really appreciated these frat boys. Um, and I have never said that before in my life <laughs> that I have appreciated So statement Libby boys. Emmons never thought she would say, I really appreciated <laughs> these frat boys. <laughs> never, never thought I would say that. But I, I appreciated this level of patriotism. And I also appreciated something else, which is that they stood up for what they believed in even though there is an atmosphere on campuses and across the US that you're gonna to be torn down yourself for standing up for what you believe in. And they didn't care about that. They just went and they did it. And I respect that a great deal. All right, I hate to interrupt the show, but I have to tell you about a new company called Googie Pet. Googie Pet is a total game changer for dogs. Pet owners care deeply about our pets because they're our family. I've introduced my dogs to Googie Pet all natural vitamin chews and the transformation has been incredible. Big brands often put profits before our pet's health, but Googie Pet is different. It started with three dog-loving brothers on a mission. Partnering with a PhD animal nutritionist, they created Googie Pet, a family-owned business that focuses on dog vitamin chews made in the USA with every ingredient with a purpose, and that is to improve the health and happiness of our dogs. The Googie Pet 10-in-1 multivitamin chews not only improve their joint flexibility, energy levels, and gut health, but also make their coats shinier and softer than ever. Googie Pet's hemp calming chews naturally ease their anxiety, making them calmer, happier, and healthier. I'm so passionate about improving the health of dogs like mine that I've secured a special 40% discount offer for you. Go to googiepet.com slash Lara Trump and you'll be redirected to buy directly from Amazon. Use code Lara Trump at checkout for 40% off. That's googiepet.com slash Lara Trump and use code Lara Trump at checkout. 
You might have heard that Mike Lindell and MyPillow no longer have the support of their big box stores or shopping channels the way they used to. That's right, they've been part of cancel culture. So they want to pass the savings directly onto you by having a $25 extravaganza. When Mike started MyPillow, it was just a one product company. But with the help of his dedicated employees, they now have hundreds of products, some you may not even know about. To get the word out, I want to invite my listeners to check out their $25 extravaganza. Two-pack multi-use MyPillows, just $25. MyPillow sandals, $25. Their six-pack towel sets, $25. Brand new four-pack dish towels, you guessed it, just $25. For the first time ever, the premium MyPillow with all-new Giza fabric, just $25. And orders over $75 will receive free shipping. This amazing offer won't last long. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TRUMP or call 800-624-3945 today. Yeah, it. you know, Landon, I, I, I looked at this and I, I guess to Libby's point, it, they kind of were going against everything that was going on around them. All these people out there chanting Intifada, chanting, you know, death to America, tearing down the flag, trying to get it down again. And they were like, no, we're not going to let you do this. Um, it was really like some 1776 type energy out there. And I really loved to see it. And it also made me hopeful as well for the future generation. I mean, you know, we're just like dumping on these people who need a safe space and like a coloring area because they're too upset to take an exam. But then you have the other side of it, which is the fact that these kids are really still out there. And the fact that I can call college students kids right now shows you how old I am at this point. But it's really true because I think that we're shown so much negativity and, you know, uh, just people who really are, are just dumping on the country all the time. That's what you see out there. And that feels like what they're teaching our next generation to think of this country so, Landon, to see that this still exists out there, I mean, I don't want to say I was surprised, but I'm very hopeful now, having seen that these kids actually exist. Well, tell uh, you what, I definitely didn't have in my 2024 20, bingo card frat boys <laughs> giving me a glimmer of hope uh, for this country, but it really did. And I saw something there that I think inspired a lot of other young kids that are thinking about standing up and speaking out like it doesn't just have to be frat boys. And let me tell you, those girls are watching those frat boys and saying, hey, that's attractive. That masculinity, that will. I was to thinking that, up. too. Yeah, we yeah, need more for your of that. country. Yeah, I showed my 15 year old daughter and she said, wow, that's where they are. I was wondering where these, you know, boys were that were patriotic and, and cared about what's happening to, to our country. So I think it's inspiring all around. And I love that, you know, there's fundraising going into this, too, because that's going to incentivize and encourage more uh, of these men, young men across our country to stand up. Yeah, we need, can we get the men back involved? Because no woman wants this like beta male guy. I'm sorry. I don't know who, yeah. who is interested in any of that stuff. It's, it's not for me. Um, and, and I got, I, I totally agree with you, Landon. I was thinking that to myself too. I was like, you know what? I bet all the girls are like, thank God there are still men <laughs> left. Thank God this is still happening out here. And they're willing to, you know, show up like this. I love it. We need, ab we absolutely need more of that. And you pointed out there was some sort of a fundraiser going on for this. And I heard that at some point, I don't know when it is John Rich and all these people, Lee Greenwood, there's a whole host of people who are going to put together like a big concert, a big celebration for these guys. And I think that's awesome. We need to capitalize on this energy and keep it going because this is how we save our country. We need to start inspiring the young generations. These are probably first time voters, all of these kids. Let's get them inspired. Let's remind them what's on the line as we head towards November because that's that's going to be such a huge thing. I love to see it. Um, something I don't love to see is how many um, people have been let into this country illegally, especially those, uh, Libby, who are on the terror watch list. I think at this point we're around 300 on the terror watch list who we've caught. Whatever about the ones we haven't caught. Just let them all in, I guess, Joe Biden's thing. Um, there's an anti-Taliban resistance leader whose father was actually killed just before, I think it was two days before the 9-11 attacks. And he is warning us now that he took over kind of the mantle from his dad, 
when his dad was killed, and now he is out there sounding the alarm bells and saying it's a matter of when, not if, there will be a major terrorist situation on U.S. soil. That is really scary. He says that terrorism is basically has been breeding inside the vacuum left from that horrific Afghanistan withdrawal that we saw Joe Biden do in August of 2021. Um, we know that he left $81 billion worth of military equipment there. We know that it showed how weak we were as a country. Um, and he says that there is the same furious rivalry between terrorist factions that was seen just before the buildup to 9-11. That is really scary, Libby. That is really scary. And it's something that the Biden administration should really be paying a lot more attention to. And they should be closing down this border and keeping Americans safe. But they're too busy having compassion for everyone else in the entire world, except for American citizens. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very scary to see that. And we saw what happened with 9-11, we saw what happened, you know, in the rhetoric after that. And a lot of that rhetoric has led to exactly where we are now, this idea that we are to blame for the attacks on us that happened after 9-11, this idea that, you know, any speaking out against terrorism was some form of Islamophobia. And we are running into those exact same situations, those exact same, you know, mental jumping jacks as we were then. And it does really behoove the Biden administration to take stock of this. I saw something that they were, you know, the Biden administration is saying 11 million illegal immigrants live in the U.S. There are other estimates that put it somewhere around 20 million. Um, it's very scary. And it's he's not the only one. This, this individual isn't the only one who's speaking out against what's been going on in the U.S. You also had uh, the son of one of the founders of Hamas saying that the protesters on college campuses and across the U.S. are pretty much just useful idiots when it comes to the way that they are perceived by the, the terrorists in the Middle East and by Hamas. So, um, yeah, the Biden administration has left the door open for terrorist action in the United States and has let terrorism fester. Look at what's going on in Afghanistan. The Taliban is in charge. We're still giving them money, apparently, which I don't understand. And um, yeah, this really needs to come to a stop. And I think that's why for so many voters this year, just like in 2016, the border and illegal immigration are such huge issues. And we saw Donald Trump win on that in 2016 because it was so important. And I think we can see him win on that again. We all see what's going on in communities and in our cities. Um, it's time for some actual adults to come be in charge. Landon, you know, you think back to 9-11 and, you know, they 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 had to go so far to get into the country and to, you know, they they had all the, these this pilot training and this sort of thing. They had to take a lot of steps because we we had a bit of a stricter southern border at that point. And now the fact and the idea that all of these people, literally anyone who wanted to come here and do something nefarious in America, cause us harm here in America has been able to freely just walk over our border and come here. We don't know what that could mean. And it it is truly terrifying. I gotta tell you, I am so happy every day because I think of this a lot. I, I look at the numbers coming over. I look at those terror watch list numbers. And I lived in New York for 15 years. And the fact that I live in Florida, not that anywhere is truly safe, but you think about well, where are they gonna target? probably bigger cities for, you know, mass damage. You got to try to get uh, as much as you can out of a, a situation. I, I don't know. This is really scary stuff. I just, I, and it really feels like people are so aloof to everything right now. They're focused on all of this stuff that doesn't matter, which is probably part of the goal of all of these crazy things. You know, the you know, furries and all this crazy stuff they're doing the kids in school. Uh, it just seems like we are ripe for something to happen. And the fact that you have people who really know who are in there with these people and understand their mentality and what they're capable of warning us that this is imminent is really upsetting right now. 
It really is. And I think you're right. You know, sadly, it's it's most likely to occur in these heavily concentrated populations in these big cities with Democrat policies where they're lenient on crime and they look the other way. I mean, if I was a criminal, I would walk into this country like so many of them do. They get a prepaid smartphone, prepaid debit card, and then they just fly to a city without even checking any ID or anything um, of their choice, basically. And they get free, you know, hotels in New York City and food. Dude. Um, so we're essentially, if, if somebody was going to be a criminal or a terrorist, they're having the whole operation funded and nobody's ch- checking them to see who they are, where they com- came from, what their motive is, because they're just lenient on crime all around. So this is a really, you know, scary time to be in. And um, I, I would avoid big cities for, for a while until we have a new administration, because it's only going to get worse um, with so many of these criminals being emboldened from low level criminal activity to terrorism. Yeah, I mean, this, the upsetting thing is now they're here. So while, of course, Donald Trump has said he's going to have a mass deportation, some of these people, I'm sure, are very smart and they're they're going to probably evade um, that deportation, at least the, these bad actors, I assume, who want to stay here. Um, and in thinking about this topic, obviously, uh, you think about how it affects real people every day. It's, obviously, we're worried about a terrorist attack. That's that's pretty clear. But everyday people are being really negatively impacted by illegal immigration. There was a restaurant tour. There's a guy who owns several different restaurants in Tucson, Arizona, who recently spoke out about how bad it has gotten in his area. He's got these family-friendly restaurants, and it used to be in a family-friendly area of, of Tucson, and now it has become a town that's sort of like a hotbed of crime. You have a homelessness crisis there that has tripled in five years. I mean, it's really bad in Tucson. And um, he said it's because the Democrat policies in his city have really just turned a blind eye to any sort of crime. So he says, you know, people would leave his restaurant and they would just get mugged and you might as well not even call the cops because nobody's going to do anything. He said, our municipalities are currently not enforcing many laws on the books when it comes to public camping, when it comes to panhandling, when it comes to public urination, defecation, or open consumption of alcohol and drugs. The lack of enforcement of all these laws have made things tremendously worse here for us in the desert. On top of that, the open border policies that we've had over the last number of years have brought in tremendous supplies of fentanyl into our community, Libby. Um, That in and of itself, I found really disgusting. Um, And he's saying that now he's having to hire private security. People can't live like this. They can't go on like this. To to see that um, he says there's more crime in his restaurant in the past four years than the previous 15 He's probably going to end up shutting a lot of these places down, and that's terrible. But this is just the same story that happens all over the country right now. Thank you, Joe Biden. Yeah, and it's not just Joe Biden. It's Joe Biden's donors, right? We were talking about George Soros and his donors who are funding the protests on college campuses. And these are the same donors that have been backing these local uh, district attorney elections across the country. And these DAs come in. They sell their ideological idea that everyone, if left to their own devices, would just be perfect and kind and good to everyone. It's this utopian ideal that has replaced actual religion where we know things like, you know, you have to curb your desires and impulses and it's replaced that. Right. And so what you have is are these DAs who go around saying that everyone's going to be lovely to each other if we take away all of the penalties for crimes. And lo and behold, that's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. And it's really surprising that people keep voting for these DAs. They keep putting them back in office. And it doesn't make any sense. It's as though people want this to happen to their cities. And then when it does happen and they can't take their kids out to eat or they can't walk down the street without worrying about being mugged, then they get upset about it. But this is exactly what they asked for. This is what they asked to have happen. And now that it's happening, they don't like it. Well, it's time for them to get up and vote differently. And I think it's also time for the Republican Party to really start funding some of these local races to really get in there and say, we're going to bring good candidates to the city of New York. We're going to bring good candidates to Los Angeles and San Francisco and Chicago, where only these 
these ridiculously poorly qualified people keep showing up to run and win. And it's time to give them some serious opposition, some qualified people who didn't go to Columbia Law School yeah. to get in there and actually <laughs> clean up these cities and make them better. We need a resurgence like a Rudy Giuliani. Yes. The 1990s in every American city. And it, it's time that we, we really get that done. I think that people would respond well to it. New York yeah. loves New York after after but, Julian. No, you're right. We've got that's you're a hundred percent right, Libby. We have to start reminding people that you don't have to live like this. Mm -hmm. You can have a better life, but you have to vote for people with better policies and people who are actually gonna lock up criminals and do the things necessary in order to have a civilized society. I I love that, 100% agree. The interesting thing to me, Landon, I started, I kind of went down like a rabbit hole when I was, I was looking at this story because I scrolled down to the bottom and they had a link to another story about Tucson and it related to the homelessness crisis that they're having there. I mentioned that it's up like threefold in the past five years. That's that's huge. But whenever you actually go and look at the people who are in these homeless shelters, they have a they have a ton of homeless shelters now in Tucson, Arizona. These people are they've never used drugs before. They've never been arrested before. A lot of these people are in their 70s and 80s because they cannot afford life anymore and now they're being forced out of their homes and they have nowhere to go other than to a homeless shelter i can't think of a sadder situation or statement on how bad the economy is and how it really is hurting everyone it doesn't matter your age it doesn't matter where you live I, that that was a really tragic thing that i read whenever i was looking at this story it really is. And just to think how many of those are veterans, too. Um, yeah. They're just, you know, rotting on our streets. And, you know, in these liberal cities, people just walk by, you know. But it, like you said, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, that's one of the reasons our family left um, L.A. and now we're in Tennessee. Those things don't happen. And there's so many programs available, you know, through the private sector as well to help. Um, you know, our soup kitchens are always full and we we ha we take care of our people. So, you know, it's just so sad that, that their idea of compassion is to walk by and let people shoot up, you know, and rot on the streets like that. It's it's disgusting. Yeah, we got to change life. We got to get back and we know how to do it. Libby, it's electing Donald Trump as the 47th president and changing a lot of these leaders in our big cities and in states across the country, all the way up and down the ballot. We got to do it. Um, we put out from the, um, actually, we didn't put it out. I think so. there was a PAC ad that was released. It was the Make America Great Again Super PAC that posted a video that was then subsequently, you guys wrote about this at the Post Millennial, Lib Libby, removed by Google because apparently it violated their policy. Let's take a quick look at the video. Hello, I'm with the Biden campaign. Yeah, yeah, I voted for Biden last time. That's fantastic. Is it? Everything costs more. Food, gas, rent. Okay, but Biden's helping pay rent for newcomers to America from around the world. You mean illegal immigrants? I'm struggling to pay my bills, but Biden's paying rent for illegals? They get handouts and I'm paying for it. But Biden can still count on your vote, right? Things were better before Biden. I'm voting for Trump. Make America Great Again, Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. Uh, Libby, they took it down. And then because there was an NBC reporter, and I'll give this guy credit, I didn't know NBC had it in him to do this, called him out and was like, hey, you guys took this ad down that, uh, that was put out. Why'd you take it down? They then reinstated it um, in pretty short order after that. They thought we weren't going to catch them, Libby, but they're already starting early with trying to interfere in this election. This is the same kind of election interference we saw in 2020 when media yep. suppressed the Hunter Biden laptop story, when they elevated the, the fake steel dossier. They did all of these different things. You know, they pushed this Russia collusion hoax all over the place. We see the mainstream media really working hard and collaborating with Democrat pundits and politicians and leftists across the board to try and skew the voters' perception of these candidates. And I sure hope that Americans are a lot smarter this time around and they won't let themselves be 
you know, pushed into believing the wrong thing, into believing falsehoods. And everybody knows we see poll after poll of Americans saying that their lives were better under Donald Trump, that the economy was better, situations with immigration were better. And we see also repeatedly uh, exposés coming out about how big tech has been colluding with mainstream media and with Democrats to really suppress things. We know that that's going on. So it really behooves conservative media and indie media to get out there and get the facts straight and give the real information and be truthful no matter how often, you know, we're attacked or demeaned for doing that. We got to call him out. Landon, if this guy, uh, this NBC reporter hadn't called them out, we probably, that, that we'd never see that video again. Nobody would see that ad anymore because they would have taken it down, at least off of Google. I think Libby's right. We've got to, we've got to call them out whenever we see it. Uh, before we go, I really want to get to this, and I know we're we're pushing the time. Um, they've had a bit of a, a rat problem in a lot of America's big cities. I don't know if anyone's been on the subways recently in New York, uh, but in the Big Apple, it's become a problem. And so here is the solution they propose. And I fully expected, by the way, Landon, whenever I, before I clicked into the story and read it, that they were going to say, like, release cats in the subway. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea. No. <laughs> they say rodent researchers have said that instead of plowing millions of dollars into trying to fight a losing battle like against the furry animals, cities like New York and Boston should consider embracing cohabitation. They just want us to live with the rats now. That's where we are in America's big cities, Landon. Oh, my God. I can't even <laughs> believe it. You know, at this point, I wouldn't be shocked if there was a, you know, adopt a rat program to virtue signal their <laughs> compassion for animals. Um, you know, I, I don't think that'll work out well for them. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I can't believe they're literally trying to make this, you know, a positive PR spin that a rat infestation is, you know, a, somehow a positive thing in their city. It's just wild. These cities are so gross, trash, homelessness, people yeah. shooting up and now rats. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, by the way, Libby, we know that in New York they had to cut back the NYPD money to fund all the illegal immigrants who have come in there. Clearly, they don't have enough money to deal with the rat problem. So they're like, hey, just sit out an article saying, like, this is a good thing. Just live with the rats. Invite them in your home. Like, what? What are we talking about? This is disgusting. There, there was a while back when people were complaining about the rat problem in Brooklyn and you had Eric Adams' office saying that it wasn't happening. Now they're saying it's happening and it's a good thing, right? I mean, Enjoy them. Didn't rats, aren't rats what brought plague to Europe? Isn't yeah, the bubonic plague. Really be watching for? Aren't rats like a vector of disease? I know that in Brooklyn there was a rat problem for a while and so they brought in possums and now oh. there's just a possum and a rat problem. It's like they really just doubled down on the rodent situation. And that's what New York is all about right now. If there's something <laughs> going wrong, they're just going to jump in and make it worse. It's an analogy for exactly what we see happening in a lot of big cities in this country. Uh, just let's go into the rats. All right, Libby and Landon, thank you both for joining us. Everybody at home, as always, thank you. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. We'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. And I won't back down. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Lara Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.